Welcome back, everybody, to day six of group stage action for the G1 League. I am LD of Beyond the Summit of DotaCommentaries.com, and I'm here casting MUFC versus FTFC, formerly known as Sequential Gaming or SQL. It looks like both teams are using their full rosters. No stand ins here. Just a quick announcement for anyone who was wondering where the earlier match. Oh, we are having a remake. Well, I was not paying attention to that. And now. There's no remake up. Get ready, Pyrian. Get ready. We have a remake. Alright, so I think we have a remake, but I don't see it up yet. I just realized that everyone disconnected from the game except for me. Okay. Um, but there's no new game yet. Um, I'm not going to say anything. I don't even want to look at my computer because I don't want to jinx it, but I think I know what it was. So I think I fixed it. The problem was I, I normally have my computer raised up, and I think the power supply is really finicky about having air intake clear underneath, Karen, and I just have it on a carpet. Sorry. Please please tell me your house is not going to catch on fire from whatever ridiculous jury rig setup you have going right now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want your kids to die or you I ha suddenly have, have to, to run evacuate. away. Then, yeah, if you hear the sound of, like, bail, you know, I don't know. If you hear sounds of panicking, either, you know, that or something worse. So, yeah. Don't worry, I will stay here even through the fire and flames. You know, I think the players agreed to remake, but the admin did Get not. Out. But, but the admin never signed off on it, so all the players left the lobby. Uh, but, <laughs> but the admin hasn't made a new game yet. Oh, wow. That was nice of them. I wonder. They didn't do it. Oh, okay. He did. All right, it's up. It's up. Join, join, join. Quickly. Quickly. Come on, Pyrian. Get your ass in here. Join my broadcast channel. Yes. Boosh. Boosh, Boosh baby. Indeed. Boosh, indeed. All right. Now, this would also be a good time to try and test, the, test those audio levels. And please, for the love of God... Do not crash. Do not crash, period. At least not until try. the game starts. I will try. I, I believe I've got in the audio settings, I've got op enable open mic for the broadcast channel. Is that right? Should I turn that off? Uh, yeah, you want enable open mic on, and I want you to turn mute co-broadcasters off when we start, just so you can see if, I, if you hear me and if I'm okay. like a good volume. Okay. Uh, and then if, it is, if I'm good, then you can turn me off. You can mute me, but I just want to make sure I'm transmitting as well. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Have you have you been following the the overlay, uh, over, overlay gate as we're calling it here at Beyond the Summit yet? Yeah, I I've, I have seen a little bit of overlay gate. I didn't quite get what the problem was, so I I won't pretend to understand quite what people were so mad about. So do tell. Uh, I just I, I was trying to tell the viewers. Let us know if the overlays work. I meant to say let us know if the let us know if the audio is consistent. I mean. If we are the same levels when you hear us both. Right. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, overlay gate was basically me messing up the overlays. See, it's... I've never had a separate... No, I've never had a separate overlay for bands and picks. Right. Uh, and I did, and I kept on forgetting to switch. It actually... I did the math, and it's only like 20 minutes of actual gameplay out of 20 hours of broadcasts, but... <laughs> None That's enough. Nonetheless, I think I've gotten like 5,000 messages about it and flames, and it's quickly becoming a... I can't stream anything without overlay jokes being made. <laughs> they, didn't re they didn't remake on my benefit, for my benefit, did they? Uh, here's what happened. is I said, can remake for my co-caster, please? And the players said, sure. And then they all left, but the admin said no in QQ, which is the... It's like the Chinese Skype, basically. Oh, okay. But um, since the players all left, he had to remake. <laughs> uh, kind of, you kind of, you're kind of gumming up the works, but it's okay. Damn, we, we forgive damn you, me. <sighs> I am a million years old. It sounds like right. I do feel like I'm a million years old. All right, Perry. If you do nothing else this cast, just remind me to switch the overlays uh, while we get through the draft. I'll try and remember. Yeah. I will do nothing else this cast. I'm just gonna sit here and watch. It's up to you. <laughs> Carry me, LD. <laughs> yeah, we should be good though. I just want to make sure we load. Uh, oh, Pyrian, right now in the bottom right, do you see a little speech bubble? Oh, the bottom right of... Like the right side, does it look like you're talking? The little speech bubble thing? Do you see that? Let me just check. Me yep, just I check. See that. yep, I see that. Okay, and I hear you. So we yeah. should be good. You I, can... I hear you too. I, I hear you too. And you can mute me now in-game if you want. Thank goodness, okay, okay. 
Welcome back, everybody, to day number six of group stage action for the G1 League. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit and DotaCommentaries.com, and I'm joined here today not by anybody who's got professional competitive insight, but by, by a jolly good fellow from Britain. His name is Pyrian Flex. Pyrian, Hello, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm sat on the floor upstairs in my bedroom, hiding from my in-laws who are downstairs having lunch so I could cast this game with you. That's how much it means. To I, me. I think this is a good game for you to be casting because I don't know if you've heard of FTFC before, but their name comes from them ha throwing massive leads and then winning games they have no business winning. So they're kind of oh, a, co gosh. a comedic sort of entertaining team to watch and to cast. Oh, I love the sound of that. Yeah, it, it, it's basically like Pyrian Flax, except they're better at Dota, but it's sort of that <laughs> same ridiculousness that... They, they, if they can turn a throw around, then it's definitely not like playing with me. I, I'll, I throw games and that's it. We lost, but yeah. So this this should be good. Who's F Fumofu? Fumofu oh, he's, he's is, the, is, he's okay. the captain of FTFC. So real quickly, let's introduce this match. MEFC playing up against FTFC. Let's take a look at the standings, as you can see on the live stream. Well, these two teams, both one and three in the group, they each have one point, which means they're in danger of being eliminated. We're getting towards the end of the group stages and the last place team in each group will be knocked out will not advance the online playoffs so there's a lot at stake for these two teams if either one of them gets swept 2-0 they're pretty much guaranteed to be out if either one of them sweeps the opponent 2-0 they're pretty much guaranteed to advance uh, because the rest of the opponents they have to play are going to be much more challenging so a lot at stake for these teams and if it's a tie That'll make things just a little bit more interesting, but that pretty much covers where we are as far as the groups go. So back inside the draft where Pyrian, I don't know if you've done videos about these guys, but we see the Batrider, the Templar Assassin, and the Rubik band out so far. I know, well, I haven't done vids about any of these three, but um, I, I, do, I do think a Rubik vid could be in the offing. Templar Assassin I had to play... Um, I was playing, I think it was with Purge the other day, and I randomed uh, TA because we were playing single draft, and I didn't know you can't swap in single draft. And there, they that, that's uh, that's Tinker they banned, right? That is the Tinker. Yeah, so, so, look, look at this these guy. Are, these are four heroes. That, I mean, Batrider, I, I didn't realize he was so good, but I've seen a lot of pros pick him, and Darkseer made it through the ban phase, which I always like to see because I love me some Darkseer. But yeah, TA's ridiculously good. Rubik is ridiculously good and uh, Tinker's good for pushing. So uh, yeah, looking to looking interesting so far. Yeah. Atlas Rack. Oh, this is, this is sort of classic MUFC. They're going to get the jungler off the bat. The Chen most likely going to Ling this game and then the Lashrak as well now. With MUFC, Ar Arge is a, another team who sort of plays similarly from Malaysia where they, they run the Lashrak and it's always a farmer. I think for MUFC it's normally support, but We'll see how they choose the lane. I like this Lashrak pick. If they get anything else that's a targeted stun, it's going to be real hard for Darkseer to leave his tower uh, and to get any sort of experience. So we may see him just end up in the jungle and not really even have anyone in that off lane. But for the moment, Darkseer first pick. Now you like this hero. For me as a caster, he can be epic in those team fights. But a lot of the times what happens with Darkseer is he just allows a team to turtle all freaking day. Well, here comes the epic team fights. The Darkseer, <laughs> it's the Tidehunter. And maybe, I don't think we'll see it, but maybe we'll get a Sand Cane or some other AoE hero. Oh. There you go. It's a, it's an Invoker. Probably going to be played by K Phoenix, uh, who usually plays Exhort. But, but we'll see. So this is a lot of investment in team fight early yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. They're going all out for the big... Uh... The big team fight, that's what it's all about. That Honestly, if you're going to play a kind of throwing team or a team that turns it around, that's what it's all about. I mean, you've got to be big in the team fights. You either win big or you go home. Oh, is that a pussycat in the background? I had to rudely kick my cat out of my room because... The, the, <laughs> I heard it. The protesting. One, the, the, one <laughs> the one downside of this microphone is it picks up everything of the background noise. That's why I haven't really enjoyed using it too much, but... Right, right. Uh, hey, so oh, Sand King pick. Sand King pick. There you go. We are going to see the Sand King. So this is pretty strong against Darks here because normally you can just surge away. And early on, he'll be okay. Uh, but they, they have a lot of chain stun now and they have a lot of burst damage. This is a lane that can kill Darks here if he gets out of position. Yeah. Ah, I, I agree. I mean, uh, you know, Darkseer is the kind of... The thing is, what you were saying about him not being able to leave the tower, I find that often you can just get plenty of farm just with Ion Shell. If you're in an aggressive lane, you can just hang back. You don't need to worry too much. I, I, that's my my uh, my findings with Darkseer anyway, which is great for me because I often need to be super cautious because otherwise I get killed. So I find Darkseer is good for chilling. You still get plenty of farm with the Iron Shell. I don't know, maybe the pros can shut down Iron Shell creeps a little quicker than, uh, than the kind of guys I play against. But Sven Ban, really? This is interesting. Sven is a hero that we've been seeing him picked more, but it's every time he's been picked in, in G1, it's been 
against the Chaos Knight. And the nice thing he has is Warcry. Just gives your team plus 16 armor when it's max, which means... Right. Well, Chaos Knight does tons of physical damage through his illusions with those 100% damage phantasms. But the, um, the armor really compensates for it. So that's where we've seen him picked up most. I, this is a little curious to me that FT, or that uh, MUFC is banning him out. But hey, maybe they saw FTFC run the, this fan before. It was pretty effective against EG. EG had a hand in sort of tossing away a big lead in that game. But yeah. this, is, this is a manly hero, but I'm not sure... I'm not sure it's a top pick. It, it would combo well with all their AoE. That's the one thing that makes it kind of annoying in this game, is you could vacuum everyone in and then ravage them, and then Stormbolt and Svench just cleaving the entire time. And he's hitting, yeah, yeah. He's hitting everyone because of, uh, because of vacuum. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, that's, that's part of, the, part of the, the sort of strategy, I guess, is that these guys know each other's teams and they know each other's plays. You're trying to throw your opponent off, not just about banning good heroes. You've got to ban heroes that they're good with. Right, so you know you find a, a key hero that the other team is loves to get, and you ban him. I guess you throw a spanner in the works, right? They've they've been doing their research. They also ban out the anti mage with Fomo, Fomofo has had mixed results on this one, and he usually plays Invoker. So I'm not sure we would see the anti mage anyway. But FTFC have run it a lot, and it's annoying, especially with Darkseer to allow you to turtle. So Bounty Hunter gets the ban for MUC and. I don't know if you... Ch I know this is one of your favorite heroes, period. I think you'll be happy to hear that he's won about 90% of his games so far in the G1. Yeah, league. yeah, I've, I've actually watched a few of the, the G1 games. As you know, Bounty Hunter, as you say, one of my favorite heroes. I think he's awesome. He's always a good pick. Um, he's never not useful as long as you can get some tracks off and stuff. So I always feel good when I pick him. And being invisible is fun. So yeah, it's good to... It's, <laughs> it's a shame to see him banned, but it is great to see that he is doing well. I just hope that they don't nerf him as a result of that. Because I don't think he needs to be nerfed. I think he's just right, but... Uh, I'm not just saying that because he's my favorite. Oh, here's a good pick. Well, you ban out the Sven. FTFC says, hey, we'll take Chaos Knight because the hero that's been giving him fits is out of the pool. This is a strong pick. I really like this from FTFC. Uh, they, they're running three melee heroes, but they're running melee heroes that have a lot of reach between Surge, yeah. between uh, Reality Rift to Cast Ball. It, these, are sort, these are like Stretch Armstrong-style melee heroes where... <laughs> they may be melee, but I think more name only once we get, yeah. to, once we get yeah. to the mid game. Yeah, it's like TA. I mean, you know, obviously, once you get to mid game, she's not really a melee. She's, you know, she's got that range to her attack and stuff, right? So, yeah, I guess they all make up for. They may be melee, but they can. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. I guess they'll get a range hero now. They should get Windrunner. She's got pretty ridiculous uh, stats, and I think uh, she's a handy hero to have. I reckon they might get Windrunner. Let's see. Well, they could. Hmm. I'm looking at the lanes now for FTFC. It looks like a Darkseer offlane, or maybe just a band of that and be a jungler. Do you think they'll get a jungler now? Like, uh, they surely hmm. wouldn't get, like, a Digmore. Or it, actually, really would... it actually could be a Tidehunter suicide lane, Darkseer jungle, uh, Invoker mid, and then Chaos Knight plus one yeah, uh, in the yeah. safe lane. Or Invoker bottom and Chaos Knight plus one. And now they Venge. pick up Venge. So, these lanes are feeling... I, the other option is to run the tri lane with the Venge, the Chaos Knight, and the Tidehunter. It is double melee, but they have a lot of burst damage. So, interesting pick. Venge mm. Hero, we don't see her much because she's got low range, uh, but if you, get, if you can get to the mid game, if you can get the R leveled up, if you can get the HAL leveled up, or the Wave of she's, Terror. She's great. Queen of Pain, I mean, she's one of those heroes that seems to turn up and just kill everything, whenever I'm playing against her anyway. She's, you know, because she's got the, she's like got the blink and the scream and all the, oh god, she's terrifying. She's terrifying. Alright, period. Apparently, so this is the fun ritual we get every time we cast, is you gotta toggle your, your enable open mic on and off because apparently it stopped oh. working this okay. this pretty much happens every game during the draft so open mic off open mic on there we go that should be working again now bizarre <laughs> absolutely bizarre yeah so okay. maybe you can yell at zoid later he seemed i think he's grown very resistant to my overtures <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll scream at, scream at him a little bit, I guess. He doesn't listen to me either. Nobody listens to <laughs> He me. doesn't listen to anyone. That's the beautiful <laughs> thing about Zoid. Uh, yeah, MUFC, I, they, don't, they can't really go late game right now. I mean, they, they have... Unless the Queen of Pain gets absolutely massive, they're not going to win mm. this late. So, yeah. I'm curious... Well, you, you think they need a, they need a sort of uh, a late game... Well... I mean, the thing is... Yeah. Oh, oh he, I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you have nightmares about him, I'm pretty sure. Oh. And I'm gonna just switch the overlays now, so I don't forget. But, okay. Yeah, you know that that was the the thing is they could have gone for a late game hero, or you could just kind of go not all in, but just go for more aggressive early to mid game heroes and say, sure, we're not gonna win late if we both farm equal amounts if we have you know level sixteen on all our heroes, but we're not gonna let you get to that point. That's sort mm -hmm. of the other way to go about it. But they go for the weaver, and now it's looking like 
This may be a suicide lane weaver. He's... There's so many disables. Well, I'll introduce the players real quickly. Make sure that little speech bubble is going for you. Okay, yep, it's going for me. I, right. I can see that going. Hopefully How do you bring up the camera controls, by the way? Because I can't see them. Uh... Uh, you can't bring those up when you're actually in a lobby, so you just got to click around. Oh, okay, you got... so I won't be able to, to watch your what you watch. I'll just have to no, follow you around. You, you got to work for this one, period. No, no, That's okay. No kicking back and, and cracking open a beer. Well, you oh, can crack man. open a beer, but you're going to have to use your Oh, no, no, well. I, don't, I don't drink till 5 o'clock. That's my cutoff. <laughs> okay. Or 4 o'clock if it's a weekday or weekend. <laughs> so we have Ken handling the Weaver going to the suicide lane. Looks like he's been given a pair of wards just to help him not die too much early on. Ohio on the Queen of Pain. Going solo mid, Net handling the Sand King. He'll be heading top, and he will be supporting Sharky, who's going to be farming as the Lashrak. We don't see too many farming Lashraks, but these Malaysian teams, Orange as well as MUFC, uh, are the two teams that tend to do it the most. Lane playing Chen, defensive jungle for him. Uh, meanwhile, over on the side of FTFC, I'm actually I'm wondering if they're going to run... Hmm, are they running dual lanes? What the hell are they doing? Well, I don't know, but you know what they're not doing, LD? They're not doing something that you see a lot in these sort of uh, sort of pro games, is where they all do the five-man going and fanning around in the, the jungle thing. They're just, like, they've gone to their lane straight away. Apart from Weaver here has wandered over. I guess he's going to ward the pull camp there. But I, I always expect to see the five-man thing where they go and ward up, and they're all super cautious. These guys have all just thrown caution to the wind. It really depends on the heroes. Okay, fair when enough. You're, when you're up against the Sand King and Shrek, that's two AoE stuns, and... If you look at FTFC, they don't have any. They have Invoker and Darkseer, who aren't really that good at level 1, so it's a little dangerous for them to try and... When you group up as 5, generally, either you don't expect your opponents to be there, you scout so that you don't run into them, or you just have such a strong level five, level 1 lineup that you say, hey, we're just going to kill you if we do see you, so you better not come a-looking. And... Right. Here's Sand King and uh, Darkseer are exchanging. Oh, this could be this could be trouble for Darkseer. No, he's got Iron Shell. This is trouble for Net. He's already used Burrow Strike. Nice juke by him. Running back the other way. And is he going to come back? It's a whole back? lot of nothing. Period. But look at that Sand King. Lost two thirds of his health. That sucks for him. That's Iron Shell. It is, it is annoying to play. It's a support Sand King. And that makes it very annoying to lane against Darkseer. They have a lot of killing potential once they get a couple of levels. But early on, if he just puts Iron Shell on Creeps or himself, Sand King yep. really can't... He can't harass him at all, and it's kind of frustrating. It is, yeah. I, as a, as a, I played it for, you know, with and against Darks here, and that, that ion shell is a, is a real, a real uh, saving uh, thingy. What's the word for it? I don't know. But anyway, what is this thing with Invoker? He's got four branches and six tangos. Is that normal? He may just be rushing his boots. The other option is you often see this when players want to rush something mid. Usually, it's a bottle. Right. Exhort Invoker can use one, but it's a little bit odd. Generally, you'd expect to see just the early boots out and. Uh, against a Chen, this could be the the difference between life and death, because you're mm. just barely able to stay out of range of the creeps. So they can't stun you, they can't Ursa clap you, whatever the case may be. So Ohio is being really aggressive. Yeah, this is, geez. this is, in, well, he's got some creeps, but I thought he was going to start trading blows, and he definitely can't do that. They almost killed Weaver Bot about a minute ago as well. He got down to about 100 health, so uh, pretty, uh, pretty aggressive early on in the laning phase here. He can be a strong suicide laner, but they have Magic Missile and Chaos Bolt and Reality Rift. That is three ways to make Weaver very... One of the saddest bugs... I mean, if bugs have emotions, he's the most depressed bug you'll ever see. <laughs> they do not, LD. They do not. Speaking uh, L uh, Venge has uh, Sentry Wards. I'm, I'm surprised they haven't put that down, but this could be trouble for Weaver here, Bot. Oh, only gets the one-second stun. Doesn't matter. This should be our first blood. One more auto-attack. There you go. Fomofu claims it, and... This is what we sort of expected, that that Suicide Lane Weaver, in a 1v1, he's fantastic, but yep. against Chain Stun, Sukuchi has a long cooldown early on, and hey, even if they would gotten a 2 second stun from Chaos Knight, would have mattered at all anyway. He was pretty yep. much screwed. Early wards, early sentry wards, that's the key to that one. I hate it when people don't buy sentry wards when you're up against invisible heroes and they just sort of leave them to be invisible. Because all it is, I mean, like you said, early doors, just get a couple of sentry wards down early and there you go, first blood. Pays uh, for itself. Ohio barely dodging out of the sunstrike. K hey, Phoenix. Oh, he oh, might even go down to the tower. <laughs> Drops to six. Oh, the creep almost got him. 16 health. Queen of Pain no. oh, didn't have her blink available, or that would have been another kill. Uh, Did you see he way. turned back around there for a second? What's he thinking? That was it. Like he just literally just just when he got to his side of the river, he turned around and ran back for a second. I mean, one one creep auto attack would have taken him down. Eh, you know, sometimes you misclick, uh, and and these players, especially the SQL or FTFC, uh, I should say, the Radiant side, they're playing from New Zealand for the most part. I think, in fact, oh, I wow. think, and so 
They're playing on the Singapore server, but New Zealand and Australia are not known for their good internet. So, well, I'll tell you what. They're also they're, they're not really close. People always think Australia and New Zealand are like right next door, but there's there's a lot of ocean between those two places. So yeah, New Zealand is a hell of a way out. And 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 then especially compared to where Singapore is. So right. either way, maybe delay factored in. Who knows? Well, so when I play when I play US East, I get 103 ping pretty much every time. So I don't know if it's a comparable distance, like 3,000 miles, whatever it is. So yeah. It's a factor. <laughs> or it's an excuse, depending on what... <laughs> what For me, my reactions are definitely not within a tenth of a second of anything anyway, so... <laughs> Your opponents need the, the 30 second delay to give you a fighting shot, right? right? Uh, there should be a handicap for built-in delay. Although I think that would just make people kill themselves, and then Valve, yep. Valve will be complicit in murder, so... Uh, either way, so far it's a pretty passive game, just a lot of farming going on, and in spite of that first blood, MUFC... Big lead. They're they're doing a lot of pulls, and they have this jungle Chen, and Weaver. Although he died, he's already hitting level four. So so far, so good for the most part. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's the power of that solo lane. Even if you get ganked early on like that, I mean, uh, you know, he's going to hit level six pretty soon, like you said. I mean, it, it's always a pain that when you realize you're up against one guy, you think sweet free kills, but then those level the once that someone gets an ult, if you don't have your ult. That's I mean, like Sand King sometimes off solo Sand King, and once you get your ult up, I mean, that's it. You can start owning stuff. Well, that actually, could be a big issue on this bottom lane. Two seconds stun and a sun strike to follow, but no, not going to be able to hit with the magic missile. Was... He's right back in there. Look. Chaos nice in trouble. Yeah, he might be able to get this kill. Vodki does have a stun in one second, and Ken's not going to go in just yet. Sentry Ward is about to expire. Gush just to usher him away. What happened? Yeah, that was, I mean, he just turned back. Chaos Knight and Venge had to run away from that fight because Weaver turned it around on him so quick. That was that was impressive. Well, what happened is he ran out of the Sentry Ward range, and if you don't have vision, the magic missile actually doesn't hit. So, uh. Uh, as a result, that magic missile not connecting. Weaver barely even got scratched, and. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the ult, because in this case it does matter. If you're able to get time lapse up and Chaos Knight's not lucky with his Chaos Bolts, which so far he hasn't been very lucky, Yeah, uh, that can easily allow Weaver to get off a time lapse and suddenly what should be a free kill, he's a full HP and he's skittering away with that yep. obnoxious little clackety clack noise he And makes. you've used everything. <laughs> Fortunately for them, most of their everythings have low cooldowns. <laughs> At least in this lane. Yeah. So There's a game top here. Top, they're just getting free farm here, so I guess Darkseer is jungling, yeah. So they, he's just leaving them to it. Sand King, Leshrac, and uh, and Chen. Well, Chen's just doing his thing. They're going to push his tower down, I think. Oh, Vodki might be able to go on the Sweaver. Nope. Tried to... This, this was a cute little play. He was hiding over above where the secret shop is and came out, but just didn't quite have the Sentry Ward down in time. And... It's a timey push for MUFC. They, they didn't push this lane early because then Darkseer just comes in the lane and starts getting experience, but now they've got level 6 on six on little Shrek, they're going to get two towers, and I don't think there's yeah. anything FTFC can, can do about it. Oh, BM pause. They don't have Ravage. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a BM pause if nothing is going on, period. <laughs> it's always a BM pause. <laughs> um, but, but there's really nothing that FTFC can do about this. They have an Exhort Invoker who's not really the best at this point. Uh, he can't do anything to slow down a push. Doesn't have Wex, so he doesn't have access to Meteor. Darkseer's only level 3. He doesn't have any points in Vacuum. They don't have a Ravage up. They're just going to have to give up this tower. And in fact, I'm not sure I'm not sure if they can stop MUC can, from coming mid and doing the same thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They can just roll straight through here and... Yeah, it's, I don't see how they could stop them. Like, look, got, I mean, the thing is, Tidehunter is only level 3, so they haven't even got Ravage to, to rely on. Darkseer is level 3, because he's been jungling, he just hit 4, so they haven't got the wall, haven't got suction. Uh, yeah, this this is tough tough for them. Uh, this could be bad if they actually try to defend this and T-Duck gets caught. Sharky thinking about it. No, nope, not going to go in. Just gets the tower and this forces in K-Phoenix to rotate. A lot of wasted time. I don't see him doing anything here. And here's the other issue. If they go to help that lane, that means Weaver or Queen of Pain is going to have a great time bottom or middle. And he, Ken, Ken is being a huge nuisance. So, really, in spite of the first blood, this is trouble. This this feels like a lot of trouble for FTFC right now. I agree. I agree. I don't know what they're going to do. They, they need to get their levels up on those important uh, team fight heroes, like Tide, and, and then they might be able to win a team fight and take a couple of towers, but as it is... I mean, the thing with Sunstrike is, Sunstrike's great, but... I don't know, I always find that uh, it either the guy lands it every time or he just whiffs continually and it's basically a big waste of time. 
They have plenty of setup stuns. The problem is here's a queen of pain and weaver. There's the sun strike, and unfortunately the chaos bolt or the reality rift rather is gonna make it miss. Ken is still stunned, but there's the time lapse. Oh, He's gonna turn it around. Get revenge. Oh That's boy. CK as well. Oh boy. This is what. This is exactly what you said. You called it funny with that. You know, once they yeah. get their ults up, they can turn these yeah. fights around. <laughs> Just barely living. See now, if, if Tide was level 6 now, he could have Ravaged then, he could have had Queen of Pain and Weaver Ravage, and they might have been able to either turn it around and get someone or, or get away. But as it is, Tide only has Smoke of Deceit. That's the only item he has, and he's level 4. So at this point, he's basically just a big walking idiot who can't do anything. Not, you know, no offense to the player. I'm just saying Tide Hunter <laughs> basically at this point is completely useless. Take that back. Take that back. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and... It's, it was also unfortunate, because Chaos Knight Reality rifted the Weaver just out of range of the Sunstrike. Uh, so yeah. it's kind of bad luck, too. Here comes the initiation top cuts. Run! Oh, dear. A lot of your favorite heroes are just getting butchered in this game. <laughs> it's not nice to see. It is not nice to see. Having said that, yeah. Who did they Who did they kill? Who did FTFCs kill? I must have missed that. Oh, that was the, that was the first blood that they got. Hmm. What are you talking about? Sorry, because MUFC have killed two people. FTFC, um, they got the first blood earlier. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, I remember. I remember, it was Weaver they killed. Yeah, and in spite of that, really not slow down at all. And this MUFC could just do their split push thing now. Leave the Queen of Pain mid, have the Weaver bottom. Then the three supports free to rotate around wherever they want. Here comes Net and Sharky smoked up, and they're going to find a delicious vodka. And that's a dead vodka. <laughs> oh, no. Not much, much ado about nothing there as far as Vodki is concerned. Just no four chance. But now there's four bot, they're gonna push in this tower too, they're just continually... I mean, look at this, Tidehunter, he's desperately trying to get some farm in the jungle here. He's still in level four! Only ten minutes in! Yeah, FT, they picked a lineup that needs to get level six. Especially yeah. with Tidehunter, you need Ravage. Uh, to a lesser extent, you'd like to get your Darkseer. Not even six, he kinda needs eleven. It's really at his peak and... <laughs> Well, MBC aren't going to let them get away with that, at least not without a, a heavy dose of punishment. This is brutal. I feel like they're being flogged right now. Yep, yep, it's brutal. And this is where Peering comes in with some really brutal analogy, but... <laughs> needs his peer to do that, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. The alcohol drives the analogy engine. Oh, Ohio! It almost looks like he was AFK for a second and then just turns around <laughs> and assassinates Baki. Oh man. This is looking real bad if you're a fan yeah, of SQL. Yeah, this is bad. This is bad. They're gonna lose bottom T2. Uh, Sand King here. What's he up to? What is he up to? Moseying around. Trying to catch, uh, oh, they're trying to catch Invoker. If they catch him out with a, with a Burrow Strike here, this could be trouble. He's at like one third health. Because that's the, the, the danger of Queen of Pain is you think you're safe. Sand King burrows you, she blinks in and you're dead in two seconds. And then you're sort of scratching your head, like, where the hell did that guy come from? Yeah, <laughs> you gotta have wards, like, everywhere. That's It's the worst thing. And now, uh, here comes Seeker as well. Oh, dearie me. Not not looking good. Not looking good. This is Chaos Knight level 7. That's I th it. I think this is the most depressing way to lose as well, it, to the extent they're gonna lose this game, or that they're losing now. Is yeah. You don't even get to fight. You don't even get to use your abilities. They just put yeah. all your towers you down. big team fight build, and then you never have a single team fight. <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> You know, you gotta credit MUFC, they really understood what FTFC needed to do this game. They knew they needed levels, they knew their laning stage wasn't the strongest, and they've been yep. exploiting it. They were patient at first, they didn't push that top lane immediately. Like, if you push that lane at the 3-5 to five minute mark, you can get the tier 1. But then Darkseer gets levels and farm. Surge in, Sharky is gonna get stunned, Magic oh. Missile, and the Sunstrike. Oh, sun like... Misses! Man mode! Oh my goodness. Epicenter, there's no Ravage! Ravage! Oh, the definitely, no definitely blast cancels out. Now Vodki in a lot of trouble. K Phoenix running from his life. This is a very sloppy fight for MUC, and they're paying the price. <laughs> Matt, are you serious? No, he's gonna die in the end. Oh my goodness. Three. Sand King manned up there. That was manly. He saw Tide, took him out. Keep him down. If you can keep him down, they lose their big weapon, which is the Ravage, I guess. So. Well, he actually wasn't even level six in that fight, and he's no, still not. No, but I mean, if you know, the, if you keep pounding on oh, Tide. Oh yeah, yeah. Then, Dead, not leveling, you know, you're kind of, uh, your team can then carry on a push. Push. It's a big, it's meta strategy, LD. You wouldn't understand, it's fine. <laughs> That's okay. That's what I have you here for, period. Uh. <laughs>
Uh, and it looks... I mean, I gotta say, that was without the Weaver, though. So as bad as it looked for, for MUFC, yeah. it's still going pretty well. And here comes Fomofu running for his life. Is there gonna be a Queen of Pain ult? No, cancels it. Ken's gonna tower dive. The bug manning up, stunned in the tower, and the sun strike to follow, and he's gonna uh -oh. live. The bug skedaddles out of there, 30 HP, now the bug's on to T-Duck. Oh, painful, brutal. Poor Tide, he's just getting his ass handed to him on a silver platter. How many times has he died now? Only twice. Avengers the one that's really getting hammered, but jeez. It's merciless. Right, it's, it's only 8 to 3, but it feels so much worse. <laughs> I, I, towers must count as something, right? You got eight kills and five towers are about to take a sixth tower. And we're only 13 minutes in. And to make matters worse, I'm pretty sure K-Phoenix is trying to build a Midas. A hand of Midas, but when you're this far behind, you're... It, What's the point? It, right, I mean, it'll, it'll get you some golden experience, but you're just gonna keep on dying, I feel, if, yeah. if you leave your base. Lane's already got a mech, that's gonna fuel the aggression. He's not far off of level 11, to be honest. He's already level 8. He's got the max army of creeps, and where is the anti-push for this team? They don't have anything to spam. They don't have power shot. They don't have Pugna's the other blast. They, the only real anti-push they have is Darkseer's Iron Shell and Ravage, and that's just not yeah. going to cut it. No, definitely, definitely not. I mean, uh, you know, let's see. He's halfway to level 6. I think once they get Ravage, they're going to think, it's okay, we'll get Ravage, we'll win a team fight, and everything will be fine. But like you said, what do they do? I mean, Weaver, Leshrac, even Sanking, they can just go, and Chen as well, just go push like crazy. You're gonna be stuck in your base, and you're gonna lose. And that's where you—that's where you start grabbing the beers. That's where you, you throw the five the five p.m. rule out the window and just start start <laughs> knocking them back. <laughs> oh no, I, I'm I'm I will not be drinking LD. I promise, <laughs> not for not until later. I wish I could, but uh, I have to be responsible during the day. And and are are you ever? Are you ever? Let's see. Responsible? Yeah. <laughs> I'm hugely responsible. I'm, I'm an incredibly responsible person. I know it may not seem like it, but I really am. Wow. Dude. Look at this cheeky ward. Spotting that was net. cheeky. Spotting net on the high ground. Doesn't matter though. <laughs> Tower will fall. And K-Phoenix. <laughs> oh, the shout catch is Invoker. Oh my goodness. Where's Sand King? Sand King's ult is up. They just, he, they're just desperate for them to come in here. This is the death ball. This is just brutal. And Vodki's going to die at the tower to the bugs. No. Lives with 5 HP. Doesn't matter though, the tower taking tons of damage, Edix back off cooldown, tower is going to drop to this, they have a glyph, and they are going to pop it, but really, what are they popping it for? They still don't have Ravage, it's 15 minutes in, <laughs> and UFC, just a, a brilliant timing push, this is, this is StarCraft 2-esque in just terms of the Dead execution, rush. yeah, this is impressive. Tide's got his boots, and he's, yeah, he... But until... Oh my goodness. There's no wall, there's no Ravage, Sharky no, gets pulled in though, no. he might drop to this. Oh. There's the ball! Agonizing! <laughs> Tons of damage, but they don't kill the Queen of Pain, and now Queen of Pain and Weaver go into work, diving Cave Phoenix. How far will they die for this? I really think you just focus the racks, or you have a chance to just win the game. Yeah. At 15 minutes, don't chase kills. But they want to chase these they've kills. Just been, they've just said that to each other. So Sand King's rab uh, ult is still up, so they know that if they get chased too hard, they could kill this CK right now. Oh, no, they're gonna pull back. This is tough because now you've got an uphill. Like you can get up those steps. You don't have to worry too much about the tower tank. Tank in the tower. It's awful. Losing a T3 is awful. It's like a kick in the balls. <laughs> yeah, you, uh oh, uh oh, Ken, gotta be hoofing it out there. He will escape. This is just a flat out Lincoln's rush, and in this game, that's gonna make Weaver very difficult to kill. Uh, I don't think. I don't think he, they'll even need it. I mean, they don't need items at this stage. Darkseer hasn't even got his wall. What is that? A out. Why would you be level 8 and not have your wall? Explain that to me, LD. Well, the wall doesn't really do that much for you early in the early to mid game. It would be nice here at a turtle, but at level 1, the wall only lasts for 15 seconds. So even if you drop it, MUFC can just wait one creep wave, and then the wall's down and they can push anyways. Okay. Uh, and that's... I, think, I still think it, it would have helped like in the team fight. It like, I guess he's, he's saying, I'll get it when you get Ravage. Oh, and now we have Ravage. Tide had to finally has Ravage. Now we might see a team fight. This is a, it's a slight sign of hope. It is. It's, look how, look at the net worth on T-Duck. 670, <laughs> 30 net worth. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The Queen of Pain is worth like 14 times what he is right now. Poor guy. This is not a fun game to be playing hard support, no, I gotta say. No, no. Good God, that's unbelievable. She is literally worth more than 10 times Side hunter, that's incredible. And now MFC could just split push this. They could just avoid that team fight. You give Queen, like you said, not easy to kill. Queen of Pain in one lane, Weaver in another, Ugh. and then choose choose your hero for the third. Sharky's got a Bloodstone up, and now working towards a BKB. 
Looks like it was about a 15 minute bloodstone. And, yeah. and as far as the wall goes, you're right, it might have helped them, but nobody expects to be losing their tier 3 at 14 minutes. You don't. You just don't game plan for that sort of thing. That's true, that's true. But I mean, you know, once if he didn't take it at level 6, he didn't take it at level 7, he didn't take it at level 8, I mean, once, you know, they must have... I mean, I personally always take it because it's so awesome. And he's got the three levels in vacuum, but what's he vacuuming for now? I guess he wants to vacuum them... You want to vacuum them into the wall. If you haven't got the wall, what are you using it for? You just sort of move them around a bit, does a little bit of damage. It's not cool. I mean, Tide's got to get in there and ravage, but he's only got boots. One hasn't got blink dagger. He's got they, nothing. They have surged. They have surged. Tide could get surged oh, in. Oh, oh, uh oh. You got to catch them all. That's not going to cut it. The meatball comes in, net dropping low. Will he drop to this hand of God to keep him alive? Mech not even using that Queen of Pain all on the back line of play. Burning oh down God. for Mofu. Massacre. Oh, this is bad. Brutal. This Bruce, is just the only one who took any damage was Sand King. Ohio's diving the fountain at 18 minutes into the game. Well, at least the tier fours. Uh, oh my god. And even Sand King lives. And that's going to be Rex. 18 minute GG. Rex. I, I don't like to call the game early, but I don't see how FTFC gets out of their base. And in fact, they agree. They're going to tap out. Huh. This was painful. Uh, yeah, it was painful. Queen of painful. <laughs> Oh, you're in, you're in rare form today, my friend, I must say. <laughs> God. Oh, they, they, that's it. They're gone. Game over. That's the, that's the nice thing about these pro games as compared to your pubs. If it's this one-sided yeah. and a team just wants to tap out, they can, they can leave. They can leave. And when does the fountain blow up? It does still blow up, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, when does the ancient blow up? It, it blows up when everyone from, from one team leaves. Uh, <laughs> like a, because um, everybody's gone, it's, I'm still looking at the Ancient. I want to see it blow up, LD. I, I gotta leave the... I, I always stay in the game because Bruno from Dota Academy generally likes to have the VODs up in case there's anything wrong with the game, the, the in-game replays, so... Yeah, we just sort of waited out. Go. Boom. Well, period. That was, that was short and sweet. I think we spent more time getting you inside the lobby than we did casting <laughs> this one. I spent more time rebooting my computer before we started. So, yeah, bizarre. It's a 19-minute game. Unbelievable. Absolute beatdown from MUFC. FTFC, I spoke to T-Duck before the game, and he said they have not been practicing. And boy, did it show, at least in this one. This is only, it's only game one. We'll be coming back soon with game number two. If FTFC lose this game two, they are all but mathematically eliminated from moving on to the playoffs. They're going to have to play... I think they still have to play IG as their final opponent in the group stages. And, and, and let me tell you, if you can't beat MUFC, I don't see you beating IG. So this no. game... This is basically their playoff dream sort of on the line in this game, too. We'll find out if they can bring it back to a 1-1 or if it's going to be a clean to a sweep in just a few moments. I am LD, of course. Joining me was Period Flax. If you enjoy his casting, or more importantly, if you just like his sparkling personality, then check him out. <laughs> Twitter.com slash YouTube.com slash Ted himself. But stay tuned, guys. Game two coming your way soon.